Hi YouTube, Timothy Unkert here. In this video, we're going to talk about the steps to completing the square. So our first step, we're going to divide every term by a. a is the coefficient, or the number, in front of x squared. We'll do this as long as the number is not 1, because dividing by 1 would just keep everything the same. The second step is we're going to move the constant term to the right-hand side of the equation. We're then going to divide the coefficient in front of x by 2, and whatever that amount is, we're going to square it, and we're going to add to both sides of the equation. At this point, step 4, we're going to factor the left-hand side of the equation, and when we do this, we're going to get a binomial squared on the left-hand side, and then we're going to take the square root of both sides to get rid of the squaring of the binomial. So you'll have x plus or minus something equals plus or minus the square root of something. And then step six, we're going to solve for x to find our either one or two solutions. Okay, so with that in mind, it's best to illustrate this with examples. Okay, in our first example of completing the square, we're going to solve for x. We have the quadratic equation x squared minus 6x plus 5. So if we look at the coefficient in front of x squared, even though it's not written, it's a 1. And like I said in the steps, we don't have to divide by 1 because everything would stay the same. So we're going to move to the next step, which is moving this constant term, this 5, which is the constant term, the term without the variable, we're going to move it to the right-hand side of the equation. So we're going to subtract 5 from both sides. Okay, and then we'll get x squared minus 6x. And then I'm going to say equals negative 5. Now, you'll see I left some room there. And the reason being is in our next step, we're going to take half of this number, half of negative 6. So we'll take negative 6. We'll divide that by 2. So that's going to give us negative 3 squared. Or that's going to give us negative 3. And then we're going to square it. Okay, so negative 3 squared. So negative 3 times negative 3 is equal to 9. So we're going to add... 9 to both sides. So plus 9, plus 9 here. I'm going to simplify the right hand side. So negative 5 plus 9 is 4. And on this left hand side, I've got x squared minus 6x plus 9. Okay, so to factor this, our next step is to factor, we would list the pair of factors. And if we listed the pair of factors that add to negative 6, well, that's going to be negative 3 times negative 3. So, you know, one way to write the left-hand side, if I move over here make some room, would be x minus 3 times x minus 3. Um, but another way we could write that is just x minus 3 squared, because we're multiplying x minus 3 times itself, so we're squaring it. So we have x minus 3 squared equals 4. Okay, so now our next step, we want to get rid of this squared part, so we're going to take the square root of this left-hand side, and of course what we do to one side of the equation we have to do to the other. Now the square root of 4, you're going to have a plus or minus, because you could have negative 2 times negative 2 give you 4, and you could have positive 2 times positive 2 give you 4. So I'm going to, when I take the square root of 4, I get plus or minus 2. And when I take the square root of x minus 3 squared, I just get x minus 3. Okay, so our next step, we want to Solve for x, so we've got to get rid of the minus 3 by adding it to both sides of the equation. So if we do that, we get x equals 3 plus or minus 2. So that represents two solutions. So our first solution, x equals 3 minus 2. 
is one. And our second solution, x equals three plus two is five. So our two solutions are x equals one and x equals five. And we've solved that problem by completing the square. Okay, in our second example, we're going to again complete the square. We've got this quadratic equation, 3x squared plus 12x minus 9 equals 0. In this case, the coefficient in front of x squared is not 1, it's 3. So we're going to divide every term by 3. So I'm going to go across, divide by 3, do that to every term in the equation, divide by 3, 0 divided by 3 is just going to be 0. Um, so we're going to get x squared plus 4x minus 3 equals 0. Our next step is we want to move the constant term. So we want to move this minus 3 over to the right-hand side. And to undo the subtraction of 3, we're going to add 3 to both sides. So we're going to get x squared plus 4x equals 3. And I'm leaving a little space because in our next step, we're going to take half of 4 and square it. So we're going to do 4 divided by 2. It's going to give me 2. And we're going to take that 2 and square it. So we're going to do 2 times 2. That's going to equal 4. And we want to add 4 to both sides. So we're going to do plus 4. And plus 4. If we do that, we get uh, 7 on the right-hand side. So if x squared plus... 4x plus 4 on the right-hand side. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we want to find the pair of factors of 4 that add to 4. So that would be 2 times 2. 2 times 2 is 4, and 2 plus 2 is 4. So when we factor the left-hand side, we're going to get x plus 2 times x plus 2, or x plus 2 squared. And that's equal to 7. In our next step, we want to get rid of the square on the left-hand side. So we're going to take the square root of the left-hand side, and we're also going to do that to the right-hand side. And we'll get x plus 2 equals, well, we have to consider both the positive and negative root of the square root of 7. So uh, plus or minus square root of 7 here. And let me move this up here. So I'm going to do x plus 2, again, equals plus or minus square root of 7. So we're going to subtract 2 now from both sides. And on the left-hand side, these 2s will cancel. And you're left with x equals negative 2 plus or minus the square root of 7. So our two solutions here are going to be x equals negative 2 minus square root of 7 and x equals negative 2 plus the square root of 7. And that's our two solutions for example 2.
Okay, in our third example of completing the square, we have the quadratic 2x squared minus 7x plus 9 equals 0. This one, our solution is going to be a little bit more messy, but sometimes that's the way it goes. Our first step is we need to divide every term by the coefficient in front of x squared. So we're going to divide everything by 2. Okay, so we'll get x squared minus 7 halves x plus 9 halves, and that's going to equal 0. Okay, so I want to move the 9 halves to the right-hand side, so I need to subtract 9 halves from both sides of the equation. do that, I'm going to get x squared minus 7 halves x equals negative 9 halves. Now I'm going to take half of negative 7 halves here and square that. So half of negative 7 halves is negative 7 fourths negative 7 fourths, and we need to square that. So that's negative 7 over 4 times negative 7 over 4. That equals positive 49 over 16. So we want to add that to both sides. Okay, so if I add 49 over 16 here, to add these on the right-hand side, um, I really want a common denominator, so I'm going to multiply 2 by 8. That's going to give me 16. And if I do that to the denominator, I have to do it to the numerator as well. So on the right-hand side, I'm going to get negative 72 over 16 plus 49 over 16. And if I wanted to uh, go ahead and just neaten this up, well, I'll, I'll just write it out for first and then we'll factor it. So we have x squared minus 7 halves x plus 49 sixteenths. Now, if I want to add to um, negative 7 halves, you may notice the pattern here. The two numbers I'm going to use are negative 7 fourths times negative 7 fourths. That's going to give me a positive 49 sixteenths, and it's going to add to negative 7 halves. So um, negative 7 fourths times negative 7 fourths. So if we want to rewrite this, let's re rewrite it up here. I'm going to have x minus 7 fourths squared equals, now I have a negative 72 plus 49. So um, that's going to give me, let's see, 23. So negative 23 over 16. Okay, so now I need to take the square root of both sides, and this is where it's going to get even more messy than the fractions. So on the, on the left-hand side, we just get x minus 7 fourths. On the right-hand side, um, you're going to get, well, the square root of 16 is 4, so you're going to get plus or minus the square root, because you have to have both the positive and negative root, square root of negative 23 over 16. Now the negative 23 here, that could be broken down into negative 1 times positive 23, 
and the square root of negative one, the square root of negative one here is I. Okay, so I can rewrite um, the right hand side as plus or minus. So we're going to have a complex solution here plus or minus I, square roots of 23. And I couldn't pull this out. I, I made a little mistake there, so hopefully you caught that. But um, this denominator here is going to be 4. Because square root of 16 is 4, so it's going to be 4. Okay, so this is going to be over 4. And we got x minus 7 fourths. So we're going to add 7 fourths to both sides. We do that on the left hand side, the 7 fourths will cancel. And we'll get x equals, and since we both have a denominator of 4, I can write 7 plus or minus i square roots of 23 all over 4. Now that represents two solutions, so, and I've run out of room here, but the two solutions it represents are 7 plus i square roots of 23 over 4 and 7 minus i square roots of 23 over 4. And since we have a complex solution, I've talked about this before in videos on my channel, that means that this quadratic will never cross the x-axis. Okay, so keep that in mind. I think this video is uh, about the right length now, so I'm going to stop at this example. Hopefully you found this video helpful. If you did, uh, please give it a like and subscribe to the channel, and thank you for watching.